Hello everyone and welcome to iReddit, bringing you your daily dose of the internet for Wednesday, August 16th, 2017. I am Michael Schwann. And I'm Nathan Wood. Nathan, how are you? You sound super dead. How are you? I think I have a sinus infection. Oh, that sounds terrible. <clears throat> I want to go to sleep. I'm sorry. I am dr incredibly hungry. Real hungry. Um... It's just... nice to meet you. Have you seen my co-host, Michael? Yes. Hello. Um, everyone, please remember that you can help support our show by going to patreon.com slash daily internet. In addition, this show normally, not today, today is an exception, uh, goes live on Facebook at 6 p.m. Alaska time. That's 7 p.m. on the West Coast and 10 p.m. on the East. Uh, we started at 7 o'clock today uh, because I had to take my daughter to get a physical because she starts school next week. So, <clears throat> with that aside... And Nathan, uh, outside of your horrible nose death, how are you? Uh, I'm all right. Yeah? Just dying through the I nose? I mean, I guess, kind of. I'm super fucking angry, because not only is my internet shitty, but every box that I've opened in depth has given me the worst fucking skins ever. Is there anything besides skins? I need to remember to log into Overwatch and get my free summer box or whatever. Uh, no, there's there's nothing but skins in that game. Like, you don't get any upgrades or anything for weapons or stuff. I mean, you can get upgrades for weapons and stuff, but it's in each batch. Uh, okay, sure. Um, yeah, either way. Um, is there anything else that I need to make sure I log into that I might actually play in the future ever? Um, Probably not. I don't, I don't know. They changed a bunch of cards in Eternal today. Um, I don't care. I don't know if I'll ever play that game again. They like they nerfed Armory kind of hard. I think it's. I don't think it's because Armory is overpowered. I think it's they just wanted the game to keep be feeling dynamic. I, but like, if they're wanting the game to feel dynamic, why are they gonna nerf like the deck that that actually makes the game feel different than other card games? I don't know, cause they're. I don't know. I don't know, Nathan. Don't ask me complicated questions. I mean. Armory uh, is just a little too dominant, but like you could say the same for Icaria Blue, and I guess it got hit, but not nearly as hard as, as Armory, and I would definitely play Icaria Blue over Ar Armory. Sure. Well, let's get into some news, shall we? Yeah, sure. Ten. Lawyer gave up a six-figure salary to become a head teacher in one of the poorest parts of the United Kingdom and is about to send 95% of their pupils to the top universities. Damn, this was submitted by SS6 Sam6 to our uplifting news. Yep. Is it Super Saiyan 6 Sam? Maybe? Possibly? That's what I think when I think SS and not Nazis. Yeah, but he put a 6 at the end as well. But, well, I mean, his name might be Sam6. That's a very peculiar name. I mean, Nikki6 is a thing, right? Maybe, is it? Yeah, Nikki6 is a person. Okay, sure. I believe you. Um, anywho, this is the story of... I'm going to mess up your name, buddy. Moosin Ismail? Uh, uh, Mousin? Moosin? M-O-U-H-S-S-I-N? Moosin? Mousin. Mousin? Mousin Ismail? That's the best I got. Um, he left a global law firm... It's Nor either Ismail or Ismail. Sure. Left global, global law firm Norton Rose Fulbright to become a teacher in his inner city neighborhood of Newham back in 2009. Um, and now he is about to have... What? A I hardly knew him. Wow, that... Mm, it's a pun. That one hurt. That one hurt a lot. Yeah. I'd like to say that I missed you, but you're making me regret... <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Uh, he, he began teaching back in 2009, and his first group of students, in a, <laughs> 200 students, uh, 190 of them have been offered places at Russell Group Universities, and nine of those have had offers from either Oxford or Cambridge, and one has been given an unconditional offer to study at MIT. Oh, damn. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, good job. Uh, he says that... Helping these children along... He says that this success is mostly because he prepare, prepares his students the way that they would prepare students at top private schools. Um, so, I mean, you know, they help them work on their resume. They give them a work, week-long work That's experience. That's not a wind or thunder. I don't hear either, so. Nothing. Huh. Uh, I don't know. Helps them with their resumes by giving a week-long work experience placement at White and Case, which helps them stand out for jobs. They also uh, help them with mock interviews and even visiting uh, Oxford colleges. Um, he said he had the drive to do it after he was closing one of his one, one of his several fifty 
million pound cases. And, you know, he just felt... God damn, that's a heavy-ass case. Yeah, right? No kidding. And after a couple years, he said he felt unfulfilled. And he thought, am, well, I've just done another 50 million pound deal. Am I actually contributing to the society anyway? And he decided no and decided to become a teacher. Damn. Not only was it a heavy-ass case, but it was also a heavy-ass case. Oh, I missed the button. It's a pun! Kind of. It's kind of a pun. It's just... Kind of. It's a play on words. You're just terrible. Wow. That's just not the case. Oh, God. It's a pun! You got another one? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't have any at the moment, but I bought the case. It's a pun! Is this case closed, Nathan? Yeah, we'll call it close. case closed. Okay, good. Nine. For the first time, micromotors, or autonomous vehicles the width of a human hair, have cured bacterial infections in the stomachs of mice. That was submitted by Mavia to our futurology. Yep. Now if they can only go into my nose. Yeah, no kidding, right? So basically what this is, it's a nanobot. And this nanobot that is made out of where the material go, uh, magnesium. It, it has oh. a, a special spherical magnesium core um, that they put into the stomach. And then in the stomach, the core reacts with the gastric acid that produces a stream of bubbles. So that it, And that's how it moves, is it produces oh. its own little it stream. It produces bubbles that it bubbles along. Yep. And it's like Bubble Buddy from Spongebob. Or Caesar from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Season 2 Battle Tendencies. <laughs> Jesus, that was specific. Um, I really like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I can tell you changed your name on Steam. Yeah, it's now Jonathan Joestar. And then my real name on Steam is Nathan Joestar. Because Jonathan, Nathan, yeah. You okay there? We, I was playing uh, Depth with a friend and he was Robert E.O. Speedwagon. And we were fucking around as Jonathan Joestar and Robert Speedwagon. It was a lot of fun. Completely lost on me, just so you know. Um, it's alright. Either way, these bubbles actually help reduce the acidity in the stomach, which normally when it comes to antibiotics... Um, the high level of acids in the stomach will make, will start to eat the antibiotics before they're able to do anything. Um, but because of the way that these little motors work, they reduce the acidic level of the, of, of the stomach and then propel themselves down to where a stomach ulcer is and release the antibiotics, effectively removing the ulcer. Oh man, that's exactly like how I play depth. Yeah, is it? Yeah, I dive down really deep, and then I find the ulcer, i.e. the shark, and I relieve the ulcer, i.e. kill the shark. Is that the name of the game? Depth? Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 not not depth. Like, I, I guess that was a poor choice of words. Is that what you're trying to do, is to dive down and kill the shark, or are you just trying, I well, you're trying okay, to get a so box? Okay, so de it depends on what game mode. If you're playing Blood and Gold, you're diving down to try and collect as, as much gold as possible while surviving sharks. Okay. If you're playing Megalodon Hunt, it's Juggernaut, except with sharks. What is Juggernaut? Uh, it's it's where one person is, like, super almighty and powerful, and everyone's trying to kill them to become the Juggernaut. Okay. Haven't you played, like, Goldeneye? Like the old Did one? you have friends as a kid? Uh... Okay, I gotcha. Also, like, I don't remember there being a Juggernaut mode in the Golden Eye on 007. Like, I, I remember there was Juggernaut. I remember there it being. Might, might not have been. I remember there was Juggernaut on Halo. I played that a lot. There was also Juggernaut on an. Holy Earth. shit! You okay? It is pouring tits outside. I can and not I, in a good way. I can see it. It. it you want to know something hilarious? What? It's not raining at my house. What the fuck? Like at I all? Can, oh my god! This is like a. Oh, I don't know. I can't. Maybe even. that. Maybe that's new... why your internet was being dumb. Probably. I also need new shoes because this means there's gonna be assholes of puddle everywhere, and that one giant asshole that goes all the way through my shoe is not gonna make me happy. I'm sorry, um, but I, I know that there was Juggernaut on on one of the earlier Call of Duties, so maybe that's also what you could have been thinking of. I mean, yeah, I probably I played a shitload of Big Red One. So, big. And fight a sour to be fair. Big Red One. What? That's uh. There's Call of Duty Finest Hour, which is the first one. Yeah. Kind of. And then there's Call of Duty Big Red One, which is the second one. And then there's Call of Duty Three, and then Call of Duty Four: Modern Warfare, etc., etc., etc. Where's World at War fit in there? World at War. So it's it's Modern Warfare. I think it goes to Modern Warfare Two, and then it goes to World at War. No, I swear World of War was earlier, but whatever, it doesn't matter anymore. World at War, well, everyone thought it was earlier, because the first three Call of Duty games were, um, 
World War II related, and then they went to the future, and then they went back to World War II. What I don't understand is why they're stuck in World War II or, like, Pakistan in the future. Because, like, there is also the Vietnam War or the Korean War. I guess it's just kind of fucked up if you if you send someone to kill 20% of a population of Koreans. Whatever. You, you want to know what legit is? Like, we're so on a tangent here. One of my favorite first-person shooters of all time? Uh, what? Medal of Honor Rising Sun. Rising Sun was so goddamn good. It's legitimately probably one of the, like, I, it, it I played best. so much fucking Rising Sun, and then I tried to switch to, like, Frontline, and I really liked the Battle of Stalingrad. I think that was in Frontline. Yeah, that was... Might not have been. That was the very first, like, mission. No, no. It might have been. No, I was thinking European Assault. Uh, I really enjoyed European Assault. I don't know. Anywho, shall we move on? Sure. Eight. Woman gets lifetime <laughs> bus pass for her 103rd birthday. That's not gonna last for very long. This is submitted by House of Rain to Art Out the Onion. Well, I mean, at least four days. She's got a three three ride bus pass, guys. <laughs> Aw. Well, she does take the bus four days a week. So I mean Hey, I know the feeling except mine's five. At the same time though, it she's a hundred and three. Holy shit. Yeah. Did you know, by the way, in a majority of countries that aren't the United States, um when you when you turn sixty five you're given a bus a lifetime bus pass? I, that's amazing. I actually really enjoy that. I feel like it should be like, more you know, of a thing. All of Great Britain and several of the uh, Western European countries, they give you a free a free lifetime bus pass when you turn 65. I feel like it shouldn't stop there. I feel like it should continue on to trade passes as well. Maybe if you have if you're in a place where trains are more prominent, but like that'd be pretty useless right. here. Um, yeah, which unfortunately is a thing. I wish there was more fucking trains around. But yeah. Whatever. Well, unfortunately, like trains are one of those things that you have to introduce early. You can't add them as an afterthought. I mean, maybe eventually when people realize that Japan was right, bullet trains are the fucking jab. Well, uh, you could have just stopped it and realized that Japan was right. Uh, yeah, they're right about a lot of things. Not every everything. Yeah, they weren't right about Pearl Harbor. <laughs> Whoa! Speaking of Rising Sun. That level in Rising Sun was a lot of fun. Dude, all of Rising Sun was a lot of fun. Hell yeah, I remember sneaking around with that fucking manual load pistol and shooting bitches with the one shot. Yeah, in Singapore? Uh-huh. Yeah, dude, Singapore was a great level and you had to go through the fucking uh, mansion. Damn. Am I thinking the right again? Dri yeah, drooling over with nostalgia right now. Okay. Yeah, dude. Anywho, and, yeah. and you know what you did in that fucking game? You goddamn killed Nazis. Yeah, Nazis. Relevant. And, and a lot of Japanese people. <laughs> I mean, shh, shh, whatever. They were working with the Nazis at the time, okay? Yeah, yeah, it was. It was Seven. Applebee's gives up <laughs> on millennials after failed rebranding efforts. <coughs> that is submitted by Opeth Fat. Oh, fuck, 91 to our television. Wait, what? Opeth Fan, oh, fuck, 91? I thought for a second I was going to throw up. Oh, don't, don't throw up, Doc. Yep, so Applebee's announced this month that more than 130 of its restaurants will be closed by the end of the year. This is them due to them having... Good, a... Applebee's sucks. I used to steal knives from them because their fucking everything was awful. Well, and uh, they're starting to realize that. I think it was me, right? They, well, they kind of shot themselves in the foot because... They're not the... giving us free knives? No, no, no. <laughs> no, because they were like, man, we're not getting any millennials in here. None of the young people are coming into Applebee's to buy our food. So we need to figure out how to get them in there. First off, they don't realize that majority of millennials are broke. Um, but broke as fuck. Broke. Um, but the, Bro. So they tried rebranding, you know, turning themselves into a uh, a more of what, what was the how did, how, how did they describe it? Budget friendly. No, 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 no. They wanted. Da, 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 where did where did oh rebranded them into a modern bar and grill is, is how they described it and bringing more youthful and affluent demographics with more sophisticated meals like chicken wonton tacos. <laughs> chicken wonton tacos. Actually, I'm not gonna lie, that kind of sounds like the bomb. It's still not what I would describe I, as a sophisticated. I would order them wontonly. <laughs> I still don't feel like that's what I would describe as a sophisticated meal. But so they tried to rebrand to appeal to the younger crowd, but the younger crowd didn't still didn't show up. And then all of their dedicated, you know, people who came often because they liked Applebee's 
felt like betrayed by the rebranding, so they lost that business too. That's fucking oh god. They shot themselves in the foot when they were like, "Hey, let's try and get poor people to spend money." Yep. So uh, they're going to uh, close down 130 stores because they've lost six percent of their market share, and they are going to be reverting some of their changes, returning to the all-you-can-eat specials and an expansion of the popular two for twenty menu. Nice. Yeah. Good on you. I like two for twenty. That's cool. Yeah. Well, it's it. Be warned. It's two for thirty up here. That's bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Everything is. we had six dollar footlongs before the fucking six dollar footlongs were even a thing. Yep. Yeah, well, I mean, they used to be five dollar footlongs. I know, and I feel so betrayed. I'm surprised that we don't have them as fucking eight dollars now. Well, depending on the footlong, it is eight. Or, I mean, fuck yeah. Yeah. Or nine or ten. I'm hungry, but I don't have an appetite. It's really weird. Dude, I'm fucking starving. I'm like, I can so feel hungry. it in my stomach, but I don't, like, if I try to eat anything, it tastes fucking garbage. <laughs> like, I'm just, I'm so hungry. Like, that's the first thing. Well, I'm going to change out of my suit afterwards after I get done here, and then I'm just going to No, go... you're going to eat in your suit? Oh, maybe. I don't know. No, you're going to eat your suit. I, I could I could try. I'm real hungry. Yeah. Six. Netflix plans to spend seven billion dollars on original content in 2018. This is submitted by Kent Brockman for president. Our television. Who the fuck is Kent Brockman? It, it doesn't matter. Google that. Anyways, continue. Yeah. So Netflix, who pledged to spend, sorry, I'm having stomach issues. Uh, pl who pledged to spend six billion dollars on? Oh, this is the fucking news reporter from goddamn Simpsons. I knew it sounded familiar. Oh, okay. Netflix pledged to spend $6 billion on original content in 2017, which they are doing quite well, and Netflix is now planning to spend $7 billion next year. Um, the interesting thing with most of this is that they don't necessarily have the money to pay for this, but they're doing Yet. it anyway because it continues to attract more people to the platform and also... Be oh, yeah, dude. Orange is the New Black and House of Cards are fucking huge. Well, and also, I mean, the more people that keep flocking to the platform, the, m the happier it makes investors. Hell yeah. So, um, there, it's not said directly what this content will be, just that they are going to continue with their original content. I know they announced earlier this month, late last month, that they're going to be drastically expanding their original anime, which is really exciting for me. Nice. Have you watched Ajin? No. Okay, so it's all CG, so sometimes it gets really clunky, and you're just like, what the fuck am I watching? Sure. But Ajin's a pretty dope Netflix anime. Okay. I it's will... about it's about these things called Ajins, and they're people who, when they die, they come back to life. So, like, this guy falls and he breaks his leg, and he's like, "Ah, oh, fuck, my leg's broken, I don't know what to do, and it cuts his throat, and then he dies and he comes back perfectly fine. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. And so one of the guys is like, I'm gonna ride this fucking building that just blew up because of me into another building, and then when I get out of that... I'm going to kill all of these dudes with a fucking shotgun, and they're making it into a live-action movie, and I'm so damn excited. That sounds terrifyingly amazing. Yeah, and it's fucking crazy, because like the one of the guys is like, I'm going to kill you repeatedly by cutting your head off, and then making you watch as your head grows back, and you're not going to know if that's you or not. Hmm, interesting. It's pretty fucked up, and I love it. Cool. Two seasons, guys. Five. UK must cancel Donald Trump's state visit as he, quote, nakedly sympathizes with neo-Nazis, says activists. This is submitted by David Kilos <coughs> to our politics. You know, it surprises me that we're still talking about the state visit. Like, it, because right now the Trump administration... Well, he was trying to do it in secret, wasn't he? Well, right now the state, the state, the state visit first, if you don't know what a state visit is, is a formal visitation to the United Kingdom by a foreign dignitary. Um, this is not for business. This is purely for, like, relaxation, tourism, and enjoying the United Kingdom. Um, and it is only available via formal invitation. Theresa May, the British Prime Minister, is the one who conducted, well, not conducted, who offered this initial invitation. Um, there is huge backlash and outcry over it, saying that you shouldn't welcome Donald Trump because of several of his actions. Um, and then the Trump administration said they will not accept or conduct the state visit to the United Kingdom until they can be promised that there will not be mass protests against their visit. So, but it's still being planned, but they're like, it's currently in this like weird state of hiatus of where they're trying to figure out when and where they're going to do it and how 
and how they can do it without people protesting. So, I mean, if it if they're going to stick to that rule of we won't do the state visit if there's going to be a mass protest, I don't know how they can ever expect to do it. Yeah. I, I, I just, I don't think it's likely that he's going to go and visit over there as a state visit. Well, and I mean, at this point, like, people are going to continue fighting against it purely to keep just dicking on you. Well, I mean... To be fair, and I mean, I cared a lot about Charlottesville this weekend. If anyone seen my Facebook, I was oh yeah, I know, and of all course, over it. I was so goddamn livid that that exists in 2017. And then you go and miss the two episodes where we talk about it. I know, well, kind of miss. I tuned into the last bit of the last one so yeah. that I could chime in that yes, you do have the the right to say whatever you want as a free speech. However, if it incites violence, it does not. It does not, like, coincide with free speech. Right. And if they're chanting blood and soil as well as other things, then... Hail victory. I'm, I'm saying it's inciting violence, you know? Yep, I agree. Yeah. So, um, either way. Oh, and for those, like, because the live feed cut out early yesterday, everyone, uh, I found out that my modem provided to me from my internet service provider had, it was starting to go bad. It has been oh, replaced... That's why it shit out that other day too yeah so hopefully now it's good to go i mean if it shits out again i'm gonna be real fucking upset but uh hopefully uh, we won't have that problem anymore hopefully look at I mean, you gci pay you i i'm i'm surprised mine isn't going out right now because of the rain well not just that but it was doing crazy shit earlier well you know as long as it doesn't go out we're good right yeah yeah definitely definitely Four. 3M CEO resigns from Trump's panel. This was submitted by fuck, Mark Laris. Mark Mark Laris, unique. Sure. Our politics. I don't know the whatever. Mark Lar unique. Mark Lar Mark Lar is unique. Mark Lar. Mark, Mark Lar is unique. Oh, Mark Lar, Mark Lar, Mark Lar, Mark Lar. <laughs> What? It's a South Park reference. There's an episode with Marklars. They're an alien race. Okay. Well, and they they all of their nouns are Marklar. Oh. Okay. So either way, the eighth member of Trump's councils have 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 said peace out. I'm done. Um, be in relation to Trump's recent comments regarding Charlottesville. Initially, Trump was just shrugging off, said he'd find other CEOs to replace these individuals. Um, that was until 9:14 this morning when Trump sent out a tweet that says, "Rather than putting pressure on the business people of the Manufacturing Council and Strategy and Police Forum, I am ending both. Thank you all." So after eight people said, "Screw you, you racist fool," I quit. Um, he finally He's like, ah, eh, fuck it. We're not gonna have more people call me racist. We don't need I... these. Oh god, that that's unfortunate. Why is he a shit? Like a gooey, open-faced turd. Because that's the state of existence that he likes to be in. I I really hate it. I don't know. I really don't know. Three. British Columbia to ban grizzly bear trophy hunting. Uh, this was submitted by Cold Syrup to Our World News. I read this like two days ago. Well, it interesting. It, yeah, you're right. This was posted. No, no, this was posted. It, it was posted late yesterday. So maybe your just concept of time is screwed. I was probably all fucked up. I, it, mean, I mean, I've been sick since like what in the morning and Saturday right after Friday. Well... This is not because they are, like, endangered or overhunted or anything like this. There are approximately 15,000 grizzly bears in British Columbia, which is part of Canada, um, and about 250 are killed annually. Now, you are still allowed to hunt bears for food, although you do have to have the proper licensing, but you're no longer allowed to hunt them purely for trophies. And this isn't for any other reason besides that culture has moved away from feeling that that's okay. It is literally all it is. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't know. I, I feel like trophy hunting is kind of a shit thing in general. Sure. I am not a fan of ever since... All right, I'm not going to lie. When I was a kid, I was a huge fan of Ace Ventura. And after watching the second one, where he walks into the lovely room of death, I was not a huge fan of trophy hunting. That's fair. 
Uh, I have gone hunting before, but I have only gone hunting with the intent of eating what I had killed, and I did. Was it good? I, it was just a little ptarmigan. I couldn't, I couldn't, all right, so the hunting trip I went on, I've only been on one. It was a very, very interesting experience that involved the next morning, my hunting partner throwing up everywhere, a five-mile hike to a, a, a ranger station, and then from, with all of our gear, and then from there having some cr random lady from Fairbanks drive us all over the mountains back into Anchorage. That sounds awful. It was interesting. Really need to get a... A light. Actually, I realized that that bright ass light behind me is what's on, so it's making me feel darker because there's all this bloom in this area. Bloom and doob. I, I, that's a Pokemon move. Bloom well, doob. I also reset up my desk and stuff, so like I'm not on that little desk. We've we're utilizing the big desk now, um, mm -hmm. and that means that I can't realistically use my lamp. So I need to get like a little light that I can clip on to like my monitor or something. Oh, I noticed there's like a couch there, right? Oh, behind me? Yeah. Yeah, there's all the the uh, the little black chair and the recliner are there now. Oh, okay. So. Cool. 3. Nope, that's not the right number. 2. Baltimore removes Confederate statues in overnight operation. This is submitted by Roadkill to our news. Good. Yep, Baltimore decided that they needed to act quickly and swiftly, and they have done so. Uh, they have removed Confederate monuments under the cover of darkness um, right after the events in Charlottesville. Um, I don't – so I, I see what people are like, oh, man, we need these for the historical value, right? You can view them in a museum. You could also look at it online. However, I do not feel like you should have a statue outside of your state building – for a man or multiple individuals who unlawfully tried to rebel against the U.S. government and failed. Yep. Um, so in this case, so fuck em. they took down a statue of Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson. Um, I thought there was... Yeah, you got Stonewalled. <laughs> I thought there was one or two more that got taken down, but my brain in hunger cannot remember. Um, and here's the did other... You, did you hear about the Confederate president's Wikipedia page? No. Someone had updated it to where it had the first Confederate president and Donald Trump. Nice. I was crying. It was so funny. And the fucking Mike Pence uh, hacker, whoever did that, fucking genius. Yeah, that one was pretty good. Um, I was crying. Yeah, that was amazing. It, for for those who don't know, it the, Mike Pence's vice president of the United States, his official website, his 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 official website got hacked, and on it, just one one of the 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 best things was at the very top. It asked, "Are you a homosexual?" And if you said yes, it sent you to hell.com. That's amazing. I didn't notice that. Yep. Because I was like, what happens if you click yes? <laughs> like, <laughs> That's fucking, oh my god. Yep. Um, either way, though, these these Confederate statues are going to be, have already been removed. Apparently, they're not removed and, like, given to a collector or to a museum. They were removed and destroyed, which... Uh, oh, I mean, I'm not too butthurt about that. Well, and, like, people are like, you're destroying history, and I'm like, ah! Not really, like... Nope. I mean, do you see walking around Germany uh, fucking Hitler statues everywhere? No, they're illegal. No, do you walk around all over fucking Russia to find, uh, I don't know, fucking, I don't know, there's probably Stalin and Lenin statues. Probably. Russia's different, though. Russia's scary. But here, here's the thing, is, like, when I see these statues, right, like, it's not like you're destroying the statue of David or... You know, the, the... I saw this stupid, like, false meme. It was, like, it was the Statue of Liberty, and it was, like, let's hope we're not next. Well, like, like, of course not. The Statue of Liberty didn't openly rebel against the United States government. Well, and like I said, it's not like you're destroying the Statue of David or, like, you know, the Church of the Sistine Chapel or the Statue of Liberty or the Eiffel Tower or anything like that. Like, these statues, like a statue of Robert E. Lee... One was built within the last – most of them were built within the last 60 years. Most of them were put up in the 50s and 60s. They're not like true pieces of history. Like if, if you want a statue of Robert E. Lee, you can put up a statue of Robert E. Lee. Like these aren't special in any way. Nope. And what they represent – Now if they were made 
for Robert E. Lee during the time that he was the president or whatever. I don't think he was the president. I think it was like no. Jefferson Davis or something. Um, if they were made during that time period specifically for the future of the Confederacy of the United States, I can understand being kind of pissed off for destroying them. Sure. But they were made way after the fact. Yeah. So, I mean, in that in case... In fact, even like... having them there, people can see that shit, think about it different ways, and then potentially divide even more. Yeah. So because they openly rebelled. It doesn't bother me so much. Like I understand why you'd be upset, but this doesn't change anything. Is really It bothers what... me. Well, no, no, no. The, the removal of the statues? Yeah, it bothers the shit out of me. Why? Why were they up until 2017? Oh. <laughs> uh because it's a They new... should have came down with all of the Confederate flags. Because it's a new year and a new age, Nathan. In fact, after the Civil War, you should have had all of the Confederate flags, merchandise, anything banned from view. Yeah, but we're not other countries. We like to be open and free. Oh, God. It's going to fuck us in the ass sometime. It, it does, often. I mean, uh, shit, you can walk around with Nazi fucking flags. Jeez. Sure, you're going to get punched in the face, but that's... <sighs> You're inciting violence. That I think I think at this point that you have to hope that that's the least that happens to you is getting punched in the face. That dude for real. One. <laughs> Illinois State Senate passes measure designating neo-Nazi groups as terrorists. <laughs> this is submitted by Tragic Donut to our news. Not only that, but the fucking KKK had uh, planned to have a, a rally on top of a mountain where they were going to burn a cross in Georgia, and they they got their permit denied. Good. As of like six hours ago. Good. Um, so one quick thing. This is actually not in any legal capacity. This is the state senate passing a resolution, which is not law. It is not legislation. It, it is just basically a very official statement <laughs> that goes down on state record that says that the state senate of the state of Illinois recognizes white supremacist and neo-Nazi groups as terrorists. Good. They uh, should have been forever ago but you know i'm glad that we, we finally accepted that white people can be terrorists too yeah right and not just the irish crazy concept isn't it do you know how many christian terrorist groups there are too many they're fucking all over africa i believe it it's fucking insane we've talked about borderline terrorist pastors that were traveling did, around did you know that there are terrorist buddhists that sounds crazy they're specifically in Myanmar. But like like we like we've talked about before, there are extremists in every facet of life, so Yep. Yep. I'm Mr. Meeseeks! Look at me. Nathan, what'd you care about in the last full night? Forever. I was gonna say Charlottesville, but I really I think you guys are kinda of done with that. I mean, my hours? viewpoints there, but like my viewpoints been all over Facebook. Like if you wanna see it, I hate I hate Nazis. To quote a fantastic song, to quote Jello Biafra, Nazi pugs fuck off. Sure. So what else did you but care about then? The thing I really cared about was I had a very, very nice date. I fucking absolutely loved the shit out of my date. It was awesome. Yeah, it went well? Yeah, except for my nose leaking everywhere. Oh, gross. I was doing that during the whole thing? Well, yeah. I mean, I was sick yesterday. So, uh... No, it was the day before. It was on Monday. So is it, is it official yet? No, but, I mean, she scheduled a second date before we even had our first date. Cool. When is it? Uh, this Saturday. Sick. We're gonna sit there and watch The Lord of the Rings, because she's never watched them. Whoa, that's cool. Yeah, I'm Did super excited, because it's gonna be the theatrical release, and then we're gonna ease into the extended edition. What does that mean? Well, okay, so you can't just, if you've never seen The Lord of the Rings, you can't just sit there and watch the extended editions. Why not? I mean... I wish, because you're not going to have the attention span for a fucking world building that takes five hours for a single fucking movie. Yeah, okay, I'll give you that. So we're going to go with the theatrical releases, which are about two and a half hours. Are you going to do the? <laughs> are you going to do all three in one night? Day? No, I doubt it. It would be great, but I, I sat there and I looked up um, how long it would take to watch all of the extended editions for The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit back-to-back. -back. And it comes out to about 21 hours. And then I did the same for all of um, the Harry Potter films. And those come out to 19 hours and 40 minutes. For the extended editions? No, just for the regular editions. I'm... Wait. 
Oh, okay. Never. So wait. The there's... Harry Potter regular editions and the theatrical releases come out to 19 hours and 40 minutes. The extended editions for The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings come out to well, about 21 hours. The site that I had could didn't have the estimated runtime. Oh, the estimated runtime for um, the Battle of Five Armies, which I still haven't seen, even though I'm a pretty big Lord of the Rings fan. Man, I I still haven't watched. I, I've seen the first of the Hobbit trilogy and what you're, you're not missing much. They're I, cool. There's a lot of fights, but like I if wasn't you're, terribly if you're impressed. going in with the mindset of it being the fucking Hobbit, sure it's the Hobbit, but like I, I still don't understand why they made it a trilogy. Because of money. Peter Jackson didn't want to make it a trilogy. He was like, I can't stretch that into three movies. And they're like, Yeah, I mean, he do did because he's a miracle worker, but Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, enjoy good sir. I will. And we're also going to watch Hot Fuzz. Uh, what did I care about in the last 24 hours? Uh, I haven't talked to you. Did I tell you I'm getting a new computer? Yeah, you did. Okay, cool. Um, what else did I care about? I'm hungry. It's real hard to think. Um, uh, I don't I don't know. You cared about our trees getting a million subscribers. Sure, our trees getting a million subscribers. Oh, I watched... A th I was going to wait till it was all out, but Jennifer decided she wanted to watch some of them, so I watched uh, the first... Uh, Technically, the uh, what two for three episodes of uh, season three of Rick and Morty last night. Hey, they're fucking awesome. Yep, I've seen. Uh, Pickle Rick. Yeah, so, so that that was the last one we watched. And we so we haven't watched seen episode four yet, um, which I'm very curious about because episode four is the one where they got Justin Roiland drunk as fuck so that he could do the episode. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm curious how that played in. So and I'm wondering if I noticed if it's better or worse. I don't know. Why don't you find out? We will, eventually. Uh, but what I care about right now is uh, closing out the show so I can find some food, because I'm real hungry. Um, so I'm going to do that. Anything else, Nathan? Nope. Okay, well... Nope, I'm going to go home. Well, okay, I have home. <laughs> Presuming that my internet doesn't crap out and uh, we don't have any more problems and issues and stuff like that, although I do believe that the that, that show is going to be late tomorrow, but I need to do some confirmations on that, so... Uh, I'll keep you everyone posted. Otherwise, though, um, everybody with this show normally goes live on Facebook at 6 p.m. Alaska time. You can also support this show financially by going to patreon.com slash daily internet. Like and share us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter by going to all of those. Our handle is at iReditCast. If you'd like to send us stories or if you just want to tell us what you thought about the show, send us an email to our inbox, which is feedback.iredit at gmail.com or call and leave us a voicemail at 508-738-2278. That is it, everybody. That is your 334th dose of the internet. I am Michael Schwann. And I'm Nathan Wood. And please remember, everybody. Don't get Bye, everyone. Goodbye.